Hi everyone, welcome to HP 3D Printing's demo room here in our site in Barcelona. My name is Claudia Galdini, and today I am going to talk to you about how additive manufacturing and specifically HP's technology solution for 3D printing can benefit the world of food and agricultural machinery. So let's start off with today's agenda. What are you going to see in the next minutes of presentation? We will start off by talking about today's manufacturing scenario, and we will assess where does agricultural and food processing plants position themselves. Then we will introduce the technology of additive manufacturing. So we will talk about HP 3D printing and what actually is additive manufacturing. We will also propose three scenarios of what typically happens when our customers first are getting started with our technology. Then finally, we will dive in the benefits of 3D printing for food and agricultural machinery, and we will showcase some real world application from our customers that we call customer success stories. At the end of the presentation, we will be live and my team and I will be happy to answer to any of your questions. So let's dive in and talk about today's manufacturing scenarios. As you can see in the slide, there are basically three huge families in which every manufacturing technology is included. So the first one is subtractive manufacturing, in which, just like you can imagine from the name, the material gets removed, it gets subtracted. And in this family, we find technologies such as CNC machining. Then there is the formative manufacturing. In this kind of manufacturing, technologies like inject molding and extrusions can be found. Finally, additive manufacturing, which is the topic that we will actually uncover today. Specifically, when we talk about additive manufacturing, we are kind of looking at the other end of the spectrum when compared to subtractive manufacturing, because here the material gets added, specifically layer by layer. Before going further on, there is one important consideration that needs to be addressed, which is that additive manufacturing does not want to replace or substitute any of the traditional manufacturing technologies. Actually, to take advantage of its full benefits, it is important to pair it with traditional manufacturing because it is there just to complement it in order to change the way that we produce. So, going on, while we often hear about a wonderful and inventive medical or high-tech application of 3D printing technology, this doesn't mean that its applicability is limited to those fields. Creative manufacturing is by its very nature suitable for just about every conceivable field that uses objects in one way or another. Typically, talking about agricultural machinery specifically, farmers tend to work with a variety of highly specialized, very expensive machines that can benefit from small customizations or need expensive replacement parts. So 3D printing can offer some wonderful solutions. And the same can be said about any production plant or other equipment, both in the agricultural and in the food processing scenario. Also because the demand for original solutions for individual farmers is larger than one might think. There are several examples of companies that, while getting the most revenue from the production of parts for original equipment manufacturers, also have a significant percentage of gains from providing creative solutions for agricultural problems. In this field, simple add-ons to machines can do some wonderful things for productivity levels. But it's not all about small additions. Reimagining a part, redesigning it in a more topological, optimized way that can only be obtained through additive manufacturing can and has helped many companies revolutionize the way they manufacture agricultural and food processing machinery. In the next minute of presentations, as I anticipated before, I will showcase some examples from HP's customer space. But before diving into the topic and the specific real world applications, it is important to briefly introduce the world of additive manufacturing and how the technology works. So from HP, we obviously come with a very specific solution. So for example, if you are mainly looking at few prototypes or parts that do not really require that much precision, that much finishing quality, then maybe a smaller machine like an FDM might work better for you. If you're not a final parts producer, you can expect volumes like 100, 1000, 10,000 a year from these machines. But if you are looking at final parts or components that you will use consistently, if you need high quality and if you need precision, if you have a very low margin of error, then maybe buying an FDM could slow down your process when you compare it to your competitors in the field that instead are investing in technologies like HP's multi jet fusion. But how does the spectrum reduce? There are three things to be taken into account, and they are the product capabilities 
and then the material, material price and material selection. When talking about product capabilities, basically we are talking about how the product needs to be. So let's say, for example, that you need to print a very large part, for example, a large jigs and fixtures or a large end arm tooling. Then in that case, not all of the technologies have that capacity. So the technology options reduce. And same goes with very high dimensional accuracy and very small parts. For example, for a very small needle bearing cage where the margin of error must be minimum, then not all facts will be up to the task. Also, materials come into play, both in terms of price, which is very self-explanatory, and in terms of nature. If you produce parts that need to go through some specific regulation tests, for example, or need to work in very high temperature environments, then not all of the technologies will match the material that you need and will work for you. In these cases, a powder bed technology like SLS or the case of MJF, so HP's technology solution, might work better for you because you will have more quality, more precision, and most importantly, flexibility in terms of productivity. What do I mean by that? Most technologies work on a plate, and we are talking about extrusion technologies. So it comes by itself that the more you print on the same surface, the more time it will take, as the nozzle needs more time to move around. And at the same time, you won't be able to stack a lot of parts on the Z axis. What happens with powder bed is very different. I will show it to you in a video that might help you visualize it. So in HP, we use two different agents, and that is why the same surface takes the same time to print, no matter how many parts you locate on them. After the powder is spread, we apply a fusing agent, which is used to increase the energy absorption of the area that's going to be melted and a detailing agent that is water-based and it is used in the boundaries of the parts to prevent heat conduction. What happens then is that during the fusing process, most of the detailing agent evaporates, so it does not affect the powder that can be recycled. And as you can see in the video, for every part, there will be fusing agent creating the final part geometry and a thin exterior shell of detailing agent that will be applied in the borders of the part. Another important advantage that this technology unlocks is the elimination of waste due to the fact that support material is not needed anymore. Since the powder bed itself acts as a support, parts can be stacked one over the other inside the build unit freely, as if they were floating inside the volume. And the operator can set the distance among them and from the build unit walls, the heat distribution and temperature, almost everything can be set and monitored based on the parts requirements and needs. Also, obviously, if you manage to stack parts without filling the unit to the top, you will reduce the hours you need to print the job. This can be done by implementing any type of nesting strategy, which is the technique used to optimize the space inside the build unit by sorting, orienting, and arranging as many parts as possible to maximize the space occupied. And finally, since in powder bed technologies like multi-jet fusion, each build costs the same amount to print, regardless of how many parts are inside. The more parts can be squeezed into a single build, the better the value of the build itself. So going into a technology that is a little bit more productive and efficient will allow you a lot of agility in terms of production, as I said before. But you will also obtain advantages like the durability of the part, because parts with MJF allow you part strength both on the X, Y surface and also almost the same on the Z axis, enabling a lot of design possibility that will not compromise the strength of the part. Then sustainability, which is normally a feature of additive manufacturing in general, but in this sense, HP's materials portfolio has a 70-90% of material recyclability rate, which is quite high compared to the rest of the technologies. Finally, the design freedom that I was mentioning before. Without the need of a support, the possibility to print strong parts in every direction makes you basically free to unlock your creativity. There is almost no limit to what MJF can do. Let's now introduce the three typical scenarios that we observe when our clients who just installed our technology space Basically, what they do at the beginning is look at the parts that have already been designed for CNC or inject molding and try to switch those designs to 3D to adapt them. But of course, those parts have already been designed for traditional manufacturing technologies, which means that they have shapes and properties that are different from what you would come up if you were to directly design a part for additive. So at that point, when the parts have already been designed, we normally see two scenarios hollowed parts and lattice structures. 
hollow parts to remove material that will reduce the total weight. And this is, for example, a classic um, scenario in robotics with end of arm tooling so that become lighter, enabling faster movements of the robots and, of course, smaller structures. And the other scenario, including lattice structures, basically has the same goal in general. This happens when you don't have a lot of wiggle room or when you don't really have the experience to go through the process to ideate an intricate design that you can achieve with 3D. But as consumers get more comfortable with the technology, what we see is a more intricate approach towards design. In this example that you can see on the screen, one typical upgrade is part consolidation. The component that you see on the left was made up of all of these small parts plus a series of additional screws to hold them together, all CNC machined. Redesigning it in a 3D printing perspective allowed for one single component with no assembly needs and obviously reduction of weight. Transitioning to one component with MJF has several benefits. First, the assembly time that gets erased. Secondly, and this is the perfect example, for any parts that need to be airtight or fluid tight. In this case, assembly will cause a risk for liquid leakage. Obviously, when you transition to one component, this won't be a concern anymore. The last and final insight about the design process is the iteration process that the Spanish company went through when manufacturing a pneumatic grip for their automotive lines. As the customers become more experts in the technology, in fact, we start seeing parts that are directly and specifically designed for 3D, not adapted, but created starting from the manufacturing method. In these four design iterations, you can see how they started with just a design concept, moving on from small adjustments to get to an actual functional model that could be put in the production of the line already. But before moving on, they noticed that there were some small things that didn't really work out, like the fact that the two fingers on the gripper were not aligning perfectly, or the fact that there was no stop at the end of the movement of the gripper. So the final iteration led to this very peculiar design that is simply impossible to manufacture, nor makes sense to be produced in any other way than additive. It provides a linear movement, the correct stop, and can be made in a very economical way. Let's now move to the fulcrum of the presentation and introduce some of our customer success story in the world of agricultural machinery industry specifically. So let's start off with a video. Producing robust and high quality components is one other of the goals of industrial 3D printing. A good example to showcase this comes from agricultural machinery manufacturer Horsch and its long-term partner Transform R2. Trusting HP's technology to develop and manufacture components for horse prototypes to experiment with innovation led to a game-changing innovation in the production of prototypes. And the decisive factor in favor of the HP multi-jet fusion machine was exactly the high degree of accuracy and the level of detail, as well as the high strength of the components. This also includes, for example, the edge sharpness of clip or hook connections. And all of these applications are normally used in soil cultivation and for seeding and crop protection technology. 3D printing offered Horsch a greater flexibility and thus a clear competitive advantage, also in terms of lead times. With additive, new geometries can be implemented quickly. In traditional manufacturing processes instead, this would involve a great deal of time and also money between the development of the design, the manufacturing process, and finally the eventual shipping. One thing is for certain for Transform R2. The company sees additive manufacturing as one of the most important future technologies in its segment and plans to make further investments in this area specifically to move towards series productions in the future. Another example that I want to talk to you about comes from Avatec. Avatec is an international supplier of grading, bunching, and handling machines for the flower cutting industry. They brought in HP's multi-jet fusion 3D printing solution and used PA11 as a material to produce strong, ductile, and impact-resistant parts at faster speeds for their machine called the Wave. The Wave is a machine that mechanically sorts and bunches flowers. Integrating 3D printed parts into Avatec's wave machine allowed them to accelerate production and prevent operator errors. This is a very good example because the Avatec success story has several interesting insights. One of them being related to one typical comment that we as a 3D printer manufacturer get, which is 
This application sounds great, like it will actually work for me. But my problem is I only produce five machines of this kind a year. So I'm not sure I have the capacity or the volume to invest in a 3D printer. Well, this example is useful here to answer to this doubt because Habitec, for example, produces between 10 and 15 units of these machines. But the way the design team and engineering team have taken the technology and identified 200 SKUs is what unlocked the potential for them and allowed them to return on the investment for the 3D printer. So it really depends on how you integrate the manufacturing method into your process in general. And every enterprise has its own context for that. We as HP are always happy to look at the specific application with you in order for you to really unlock the benefit of the 3D printer. Moving on to the second field of application of this presentation, what is HP 3D printing's value proposition for the food processing industry? And this time again, I would like to start by showing you a video of one of our customers. The Print Trace project afforded us the opportunity to use 3D printed parts out of the MJF in a production setting. This is an Apple labeling machine. Pass it underneath the conveyor and the machine actually puts the labels on the apples. We put two and two together and just said, we can make production parts for this using this 3D printer. Instead of using a plastic injection molding process, we ended up making roughly 12 of the parts in there out of a 3D printing process. At least one of the rollers was already designed for injection molding and we backed out of that and decided to go with the MJF instead, but we just left the design as is. Some of the pulleys within the machine are 3D printed. There's actually some vacuum fittings in there that were 3D printed. This part has a little channel that runs through it, which you couldn't machine, so in order for these parts to be made, we had to print them. And that afforded us the ability to make what was an expensive machined part on the MJF, and so that saved money right out of the gate. If you're designing for injection molding, you have a certain number of constraints you have to consider in that design process. For any 3D printing, a lot of those constraints are removed, but for the MJF, you have the confidence of knowing that the material properties are nearly matching injection molded parts, and so that is a big plus. The client was very happy with this. Uh, he was super impressed with how the 3D parts turned out. The machine operates really well. These are definitely the most mechanically sound parts that I've ever used from a 3D printer. So as you saw in the video, the goal of Sigma Design's client was to save money while simultaneously improving the design. And that's how they produced this pneumatic end effector for their Apple labeling machine. Basically, the opportunity they saw with 3D printing was to redesign the fruit labeling machine. And this was possible fast and in a cheap way for short batches, pretty much on demand. Another example I wanted to talk to you about comes from company Campetella. What they wanted to do is to produce these robotic components for labeling machinery in a way that could join mass production and customization in order to create ad hoc solutions for their needs and product line specifications. And this helped them to unlock specifically three benefits of 3D printing. First of all, design freedom both in terms of lighter weight parts that of course, you know, will unlock a cascade of benefits because they transitions to plastic. And secondly, thanks to parts consolidation, many parts all printed out in one. Secondly, reduced lead time, specifically in this case, the cycle time and consequentially the time to market was reduced from eight weeks to only four weeks. And finally, optimized performance. This happened both in terms of airflow optimization because they were able to include some internal air channels and also integrated external components because they enable easy assembly. Next example comes from Italian producer Amadori. Amadori, along with Elbeck 3D, redesigned and optimized a gripper, a robotic gripper for a mechanical arm that was discontinued by the machinery manufacturer. The replacement of the material and production technology made it possible to obtain a new component with new adventurous characteristics such as lighter weight and improved production costs. And all of these enabled the creation of a discontinued component that otherwise would have been extremely expensive for Amadori. 
the three benefits that were unlocked in this case as well were faster lead times and reduced costs. Lightweight and airtight component, and specifically when we talk about percentages, we are talking about a 50% weight reduction and a 97% production cost savings. And finally, here too, an optimized performance, because we know that lighter weight parts will then lead to lighter weight and faster robots that will take less space along the production line because they will be smaller and consequentially also consume less energy. Final example that I want to share with you comes from company Prometal 3D, a company that specializes in precision machining and provides rapid prototyping services and short run series using 3D printing technology with HP Multi-Jet Fusion. Basically, what happened was that one of Prometal's 3D main customers and partners, Aira Robotics, which is a robotics production company whose main business relates to robot design and production for food processing lines, wanted to improve the design of an end-of-arm robot that aids in laser marking products on food processing lines. One of the features of these robots is an end of arm that is basically assembled using metallic parts, but obviously the robot must move the laser head precisely and quickly in order to accelerate processes as much as possible. So Aira asked metallic parts producer Prometal 3D to improve the laser head design in order to reduce the parts weight and improve performance. Prometal 3D suggested transforming the laser head parts from metallic to plastic using HP multi-jet fusion technology and material PA-12. When transformation was complete, they managed to achieve a 75% in weight reduction, which allowed for the use of smaller robots instead of the current larger and more expensive ones. And this change also resulted in an increased free space on the food processing line and obviously less energy consumption from the robot. Each new part design for 3D printing integrates rounded edges with a specific radius. This feature is very important for meeting hygienic standards in food processing plants. CNC machine parts had squared edges around 90 degrees angle, which is a problem for dirt accumulation in the edges as it is very difficult to clean and remove dirt. The manufacturer had not been applying this rounded edge feature in CNC machining designs because it would have caused a 15% cost increase and up to an extra week of manufacturing time. But thanks to the robot end arm weight reduction, Prometal's 3D customer was able to apply this new design in a model for smaller robots, reducing overall costs of the project, logistics, installation, energy consumption, and also space, as I already said. Each robot used to cost around 50,000 euros. Thanks to this optimization, the new robot models are much smaller and cost approximately 40,000. In a food processing plant, there can be at least 10 robots, depending on plant dimensions, obviously, which implies a direct cost reduction of at least 100,000 euros, not including other types of cost reductions and benefits. So to conclude, what is HP 3D printing's value proposition for food and agricultural processing plants. The focus can be on prototyping, on spare parts, on final parts for asset heavy industries that need machinery and equipment requiring a lot of maintenance, many problems related to manufacturing, storing and shipping on spare parts. These are all scenarios in which HP 3D printing with multi-jet fusion can actually help solving these issues. Also, other pain points that can be surpassed with the technology would be time and costs associated with repeating molds during product development stages. 3D printing could bring the lead time around for molds for pre-series, reiterating and testing new designs quickly to arrive at final series production faster. Also, cost of inventory storage for spare parts can be halved. Labor and maintenance costs of inventory storage including also transportation, expedition costs. All of these issues can be won with a production on demand, exactly when you need it and where you need it. And finally, 3D printing your parts can lead to a potential competitive advantage when you shorten the turnaround times for these spare parts. So you lower your dependency on external suppliers. Not to mention all the benefits that have already been mentioned throughout the entire presentation, such as mass customization, design freedom, weight reduction, and then cost and lead times reduction that play a key role.
So that concludes our presentation on the world of food and agricultural machinery and additive manufacturing. Here is my contact details, once again, in case you want to contact me after this presentation. And also remember that we are about to have a live Q&A session. So feel free to submit to us any question, any doubt, any curiosity that you might have. My team and I will be extremely happy to try and be as exhaustive as possible. Once again, thank you for your attention.